if you have a question, ask a qualified professional. This is the name of this new series that we wanted to start with a couple of experts that we are dealing with a lot because we see a trend that I guess you guys have also noticed is that sometimes we believe what we see on the internet, doesn't matter who says it, a little bit more than sound um, information that is backed up by studies, research, etc, etc. So we wanted to create a series where when we have a question, we actually make have the habit of going and contacting someone who actually knows, someone who's been qualified in answering that question. The first question that we wanted to discuss, and that's with you, Stephanie, was <laughs> calorie counting, because you made a post last week about that. And I think it's a great topic, easy to deal with, very easy to answer, but however, how many times did I have a student coming to me and say, yeah, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm on a 1,200 calories. Doesn't matter the number, but like, why is your diet based on that number and not something else? Where does that come from? And so I think Stephanie, maybe first, if you can introduce yourself, because this topic of this series is to have a qualified professional, what qualifies you to answer this question? <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, I'm a doctor and then went later um, via nutritional medicine into sports nutrition. So I think I do have the basic qualification to answer this question. Um, yeah. Um, so the thing is, 1,200, I know it is incredibly popular. That is actually what a three to four year old toddler uses every single day. So why do we actually think like a dancer can survive on it? Um, most of us. So actually, maybe let's 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 back up on the on the question altogether. Um, why do we do do dancers need to be counting calories? Not at all. Let's, let's go there. All. Yeah, absolutely. So there are so many reasons. Um, one is there's a calculator. If you start counting ca uh, calories, so someone calculates it for you. Usually, it is like an internet based um, calculator. This calculator. Yep much about you most of the time you can fill in um, gender age activity level mm -hmm. that not all the time so and then it is just like an average number that it spits out and that is what kind of you've got to deal with um and also most does of that work uh, sorry sorry um does that work for the general population well that actually, yeah no not not even really because there are so many factors that really um, influence how much energy we need in a day. So at the moment, it is quite hot outside, so that increases our energy needs. It mm -hmm. could also be like very um, extreme cold temperatures. Um, it is for um, female dancers, the second phase of the cycle means we are burning more calories. So the mm -hmm. calculator is not interested in that. So it's totally oh, which is why we're always a bit more hungry at that time. Yeah, of course, it's totally normal. It's really totally normal because for the body, it is actually really... Um, like some sort of work, work that requires okay. energy to build up this cycle and keep it going every single month. So it's totally normal. And some studies have actually shown that some women burn as much as a small meal more during this phase. So like the calculator would make you miss out on that meal. Just one, <laughs> one of, of very, very many examples. Um, and then it's saying, so such an important conversation. Thank you, I agree. It, it is, it is really calorie counting. It is so detrimental to health. And I think we can really say for the general population, just as much as for dancers and for dancers with their trade of perfectionism. Do you, do you have an idea where that comes from? Because, you know, it's, for me, it's like mental preparedness. We have some belief sometimes and understanding where they come from can help debunk it. So yeah, um, so how and when can calorie counting be useful? Mm, um, oh, there are not too many situations because you can basically say calorie counting disconnects any person, general population, dancer, any other athlete from the body's cues. Okay. So that's a fact. Um, so the indication to count calories is it, it can be used as a temporary measure in some sort of lifestyle disease treatment every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, it can make sense to a certain degree to educate someone on nutrition, but oh, it is su such a narrow indication, actually. Um, and um, so first of all, we are disconnecting from 
our body's cues. So we have no idea, like, like you just mentioned, oh, that's why we are like the space of our cycle. Um, that is why we are um, more hungry. So yeah, the calculator is not telling you that. So, so you, let's get rid of calories. You will, be thinking, you will be thinking, oh, but that's what the calculator said I need for day. Um, and then you're like, oh, I'm still hungry. Oh, it must be me. And you know, like you think you are failing at whatever you're doing. And that is mentally not a good place to be in. Um, and then there's so also- What I hear you say, it is exactly <laughs> like looking at the number on your scale to know if you're at the right uh, place in terms of your body composition. This is not where to look for. This just, so forget about I... calorie countings. When you buy yeah. something, don't look, don't even look at it. It's not useful. But, yeah, somehow- So then somehow... what do you do? We have to say don't look at the food labels because scientific studies have shown that what you read on a food as, as like food label or energy right, within a certain package or serving size that can be you know like um wrong by 200 percent so actually let's just think like it's 200 percent that's like either you're getting 200 percent more or you're getting 200 percent less it yeah. totally depends also on how your body is absorbing absorbing the calories yes. because that that is the next point these calculators always think that we'll be absorbing every single calorie of the foods we like type into the program yeah. or else that's not happening in real life it, it just doesn't happen so if we ate sugar all day like pure refined you know mm -hmm. able sugar probably that would be would be a very close um, but actually, we are eating things raw. Maybe, you know, you're eating fruits raw. Um, you're eating some sweet corn raw. So, and these are, these are foods or, or just like whole grains, less, less processed foods in general. Yes. And that means your body does have quite some work and it won't get all the energy out of this food because there's loads of fiber, for example, also. Um, and if we mm -hmm. get maybe... Let's take the example of sweet corn, maybe only 70% out of what you ate, but you type in that you ate, let's say 100 grams sweet corn, and then the calculator will be like, okay, 100 grams sweet corn, that's energy X, Y, Z, and that's what you've eaten already. But actually you had 30% less, and it's not mm -hmm. telling you about this. So I have, I have a question, don't laugh at me, but <laughs> I used to say... <laughs> And it was, it, it was a joke, but I was just wondering if there's a scientific truth behind it. I used to tell my friends, if you drink a lot of water, if you eat like something sweet, you know, the stuff you, you want to eat, but you're thinking it's bad for my day. But if you eat a lot of water, it will wash it through. Does it? <laughs> not really. No. no. Um, uh, uh, hi, oh, hi, so I'm not lowering the number of calories if I, if I drink a lot of water to try to push it down my intestine. Yeah, it's not no. working. No, no, no. I mean, the body is smart. It knows what it can absorb and what it can't absorb. Uh, there is a little bit to it, but that is not really significant. But what we know, and what is probably more important, um, the more dehydrated we are, the more work it is for our body and the more energy we are mm -hmm. actually using. So this is why I mentioned, for example, the um, hotter temperatures at the moment. Yeah. Um, this does play a role, and that is even not not insignificant. So that is that is more of a thing we need to pay attention to because lots of dancers go with some level of dehydration um, most days, yeah. actually. Yeah, I was talking to a student yesterday and she was saying in her school they're, they are not allowed to drink water during class. I know. I know. Um, so you're saying not... the, the numbers on the labels may be wrong. You're saying also it doesn't take into account the fact that we the body is not going to ingest all of it. So yeah. there's a, you're also saying we, you, every day is different and your um, energy expenditure will, will uh, differ from one day to another. Are there any other reason, if we need more, <laughs> not to count calories? Not to count calories. So actually it really makes you, um, makes you, uh, you start to make bad food choices or let's say poor food yes, choices. Yes, you mentioned that as well. Yeah. 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 Um, to make poor food choices because if you've ever done it i mean if you haven't just you you nobody else please no dancer who is easily triggered do that just for fun try and fill in what you're eating in a day and what the calculator tells you what you are actually allowed to eat in a day i had always reached my limit or at around late lunch time and it was like um <laughs> wait i'm going to have dinner later actually you know 
Um, so it it got me in a terrible state of mood, I would say, because it was like, what's this thing saying? And I mean, luckily, I was really resilient because I've got the background. But someone mm -hmm. who doesn't have the background probably goes like, because that's what we are told by diet culture all the time. It is us, you know, it is always us failing, it is us not having enough willpower. Um, so we start to think like, oh, it's me, probably this program must be right. But actually you are right and the program is totally wrong. And mm -hmm. I absolutely want to emphasize that it is so important to listen to our hunger cues because they are there for a reason. Um, so hunger and taste, because in, in terms of um, choices, poor choices, I wanted to share my personal experience because I had a time where I was counting calories and I realized I was putting aside a lot of um, fruits and vegetable, yeah. well, not vegetables, but a lot of fruits, yeah. uh, like bananas, for example, yeah. um, because it was really heavy on calories. But then I was missing out on a lot of vitamins and nutrients yeah. that, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember any, but I was, I realized at some point that my, my, my um, diet wasn't very diverse. It wasn't really balanced. I was eating always the same thing because that was safe because I knew yeah. exactly how much calorie was this, 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 and this. Yeah. And yeah. it was lacking variety. And then it became also boring. Yeah. And then, absolutely. and then as you can guess, then I started not really enjoying eating. Absolutely. Um, and also um, lots of dancers then get, they, they plan ahead, but in a way that it doesn't allow them to listen to their body cues and <laughs> cues anymore. Um, so it means like, okay, for breakfast, I can only have this much. And then they, you know, an hour later, it's like, oh, that's totally ridiculous. I can't be hungry. You totally can hungry because your body's energy needs are not what the calculator has said. Um, and also very, very popular. It starts with, um, so as I said, I usually used up my allowance per day. It was not even a weight loss calculator. It was just like keeping my weight. Yes. Um, and um, uh, my allowance was always, you know, out of the window by late lunchtime. So... That happens to a lot of people. Um, no, I'm laughing because I've been there and I've done that. <laughs> yeah. And what do they start doing? They eat like rice cakes for the rest of the day. That is nutritionally not contributing much to a yes. well diet. Let's say it like that. Yeah. But that, that's because you're hungry and you want to keep your calories. And as you said, you make poor choices. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about like how underfueling not only affects the body, but also affects the brain, then it is no wonder that these calculators really get us into a really bad mood. So what would you recommend? If we, so let's forget about calories. We're not reading the labels for all of the reasons that you mentioned. How do we, let's not talk about losing weight either. Let's talk just about maintaining a healthy body composition. What would you recommend? Um, actually, it is more about um, nutrients, but I still I don't even recommend to count macronutrients because this is this is just the same. Um, ma counting macronutrients doesn't take into account the face of the cycle, the outer temperatures, um, whether you're exactly the same thing recovering from an injury or whatever. But knowing about them, knowing when it makes sense to eat more carbohydrates, more protein, when you should mix them in what sort of, you know, the ratio you should mix them like post recovery, where it's really important. Um, knowing about healthy fats, how to like mix them into your diet. Mm -hmm. And also with a typical dancer schedule, when should you um, refuel and what should you refuel should it be something liquid which lots of dancers actually are afraid of but what can help a lot and also helps a lot in achieving the best body composition for dance actually mm -hmm. um, i mean we talked about this in the webinar we had a whole day um i think we went when was yeah. this webinar last december i guess it is available anyway <laughs> on, on yeah. um so is, yeah. we talked just knowing when you should eat what and then you should tune in with your hunger cues um and and to see know how, how it is. yeah 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 absolutely and, and what absolutely. do you need to add like if you need to add some fruits here and there a little snacks here and there depending on actually how you how you feel yeah instead it's, of it's really Instead yeah, of a plan think... that it's set in stone. Is that, I, is that what you're trying to say? Guys, yeah. plan your meals ahead, but ma make sure that you have extra snacks here and there in case you need them because you have to listen yeah. to your body. Do I understand it right? Yeah. Or if you're, uh, um, you know, if you're um, at a boarding school or if there's a canteen um, that is like 
associated with the school and you feel you've had your lunch but you're still hungry thank god for a second it is really we need to tune in with our body and of course saying then go for a second it is of course like okay um i have like only 15 minutes or 20 minutes until i need to start eating so what and uh, until i need to start dancing again so what makes sense to eat right now it is way more knowing about what makes sense when mm -hmm. than calories or counting macronutrients yeah it, i was laughing because last year during a summer intensive and you know, after lockdown, it's hard to know exactly how your body is going to react to suddenly being back to six hours a day of dancing. And one of our friends, we went for a pizza and at the end of the pizza, I was looking like this. And we were like, you're still hungry. <laughs> and he said, yeah. <laughs> but the thing, he was, he was, I think, 16 or something in the middle of his gross purse. And my friend and I, we both said, go for it. If you're hungry, you're hungry. And he was like, yeah, but I already had like it won and said yeah but you're you're growing it's yeah yeah and also no reason it's like it, well you're not gonna go to bed hungry <laughs> exactly um a we don't sleep well if we are because if if we don't eat enough uh, we don't have enough of our happy hormone and our happy hormone again is the precursor of our sleep hormone so that is doing the math actually if you don't have enough of the one you can't have enough of the other um but also um that is just for our body not getting enough our body feels stressed, no, no matter how much we are trying to talk ourselves out of this situation. Um, like, oh, no, I can, I can go without, no problem at all, you know. Um, but your body is like, well, hello, actually, can somebody please listen? That was not enough. Um, and so you're stressing your body and stressing the body in the sense of stress we could avoid, technically, if we mm -hmm. just were really kinder to our bodies this again has a negative influence on our body and we think I, th I think we tend to underestimate this completely um and so why I, I was any about talk about that a, a lot of what you're talking about requires you to trust what your body is telling you if if it's saying i'm thirsty drink if it's saying i'm hungry eat um yeah. get to get informed on what is a healthy meal and as you said when to fuel what based on your um activity throughout the day and i feel that it's that's the part that is missing a lot we don't trust ourselves anymore we're trusting what we read in a magazine that as you say a lot of time is for general population and sometimes is even not really right there's, yeah. there's things in there that i wouldn't recommend to my best friend to my worst enemy i wanted to say sorry <laughs> and <laughs> Um, and uh, it is very important for dancers to understand that they actually need to be in tune with their body instead of trying to force it into under fueling all the time. Because as you said, you're creating stress that is in addition to everything you already do. And you're going to be unhappy and miserable. Yeah. I guess the, the, the question that is the hardest one to answer is like, so how do you lose weight? Because I guess the first question you're going to reply to that is, do you really need to lose weight? Um, yeah, absolutely. Because um, do we have another, do we have another live about this weight? I think body? we're going to have one. <laughs> we will have to have I one. To keep, I wanted to keep them short and I think we answered yeah. the primary no, no. calorie so, counting. The thing is, what are you looking for? The best body composition for dance or are you looking for the lowest weight on the skates? These two are not the same absolutely not the same they can actually be the opposite of what you think they are yes. and uh, so that would be my first or that would be my my go-to approach um clar just really clarifying um what is it about is it about weight or is it about body composition and also we see a lot of dancers actually with a what we would say normal range of weight bmi is a very is a thing i don't like at all but a lot of oh that's that would be another topic a lot of discussions go let's with like, the, you, know you know what let's debunk the bmi in the next one yeah we can do that it's really it's kind of we need to start we need to start with the basics before we get into because yeah. i think the question everybody wants us to answer in five seconds and it's impossible is how do i lose weight that's you that's the question and the problem yeah. is as you said do you really need to lose weight but you know what i want to debunk the bmi i would love to do that yeah bmi is really I have to I have to pay that is really ridiculous I have to pay 12 euro 50 for my health insurance 
on top of my health insurance because I'm just under the overweight BMI. I, it's my pet peeve BMI. I am absolutely so. I find this is this is ridiculous. They're punishing me for being healthy um, and uh, not fitting into a category that was invented more than 100 years ago. Um, so that's definitely the next thing. But actually, what I wanted to say, I'm losing weight. Lots of, for lots of dancers, this is not are no longer stressing about what they eat and learning to not stress so much about them mm -hmm. trusting their body and so actually losing weight is far less about the food than you think um yeah. and it is pretty much in a holistic approach where lots of mental health components are in it as well what i'm gonna say is absolutely not scientific but i have lost weight the day i started to try to lose weight uh, yes, yeah, that's what it is. Just, <laughs> just like that. The day I, st I stopped actually thinking about it and trying or whatever, I suddenly completely changed. Yeah, absolutely. This stress is really not to underestimate because stress, as I said, it's a threat. And a threat means the body wants to hold on to body fat because that helps us survive. You can't talk your body out of it's not going to be that bad because it's not going to understand it. That's just our genetic heritage. Um, unfortunately, it is, it is not like, it's not great, but that's how we function. So knowing about it and then being kind to your body and not stressing so much anymore, that's a good way to start. Right? That's a good way to start. So let's give that advice to everyone. Stop stressing about it. Enjoy what you eat. Start in getting informed if you don't not yeah. know yet about yeah. what is a healthy meal, what you need throughout the day, depending on what you need. And um, actually, Dr. Stephanie reminded me we did an amazing uh, webinar uh, with Dr. Nikki as well, actually. Mm -hmm. Still available on Call the Valley, where you can learn so much because it was like two hours of information. <laughs> it was, I was, I was personally blown away because I, I wasn't expecting you to inform us so much. Even I learned a lot. There, and there was some yeah that was that was wonderful i mean i cannot thank you more for this webinar it was really amazing thank you and yeah so yeah go ahead no i just want to say so i hope this was a good insight into counting calories is not a go-to approach for dancers or anyone else dancer or anyone else counting calories not useful so grab that pack look at it has a lovely picture Take it. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not the advice. <laughs> maybe this is not how you should do grocery shopping either, but surely not looking at calories. And also we said something interesting, not also looking at nutrients because it has the same underlying issues. The numbers you see is not necessarily the number you get, etc., etc. Yeah, I remember a program like if it fits your macros or so. Um, you can get, get just as obsessive about this. Yeah. As, as I think well. anything that makes you count this and this and this, you get obsessive about it. Well, there is a risk that you get obsessive about it. And you, again, you disconnect from your body. So don't do it. Okay. That was step one into understanding better health and nutrition. All Thank right. you, Stephanie, for, you know, for going, to, going through that live with me. That was the pilot. Um, if you guys liked it, please send me a message so that I, you know, schedule more of those. If you have any questions you want us to answer, we want to keep it like really short and just very specific to just one topic. Because as you can see, Stephanie and I, we can go on forever. <laughs> yeah, we <probably> shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.